Hello, seventh graders. This is Miss White, and today we're doing the N Module 4 study guide. During this review, I'm going to go over what formulas we should use for what type of problems and how to utilize those formulas. All right, number one Nate invests $800 in a savings plan. The savings account pays an annual interest rate of 13%. A. How much money will Nate earn if he leaves his money in the saving account for five years? Before we begin, we have to know what formula we're going to use, and that's going to be the interest formula. Interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. And the time is usually in years. So now what we need to do is look at our scenario and figure out what's our principal, what's our rate, and what's our time to figure out how much money Nate will earn if he leaves the money in the savings account for five years. So our principal is going to be the amount that he puts into the savings plan, and he puts $800 into the savings plan. The rate is going to be the percent. It is going to be the annual interest rate of 13%, and so that is going to be our rate. When we have rate as a percent though, and we multiply it, we have to turn that percent into a decimal. So when I have 13%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my decimal to the left twice. And when I write 13% as a decimal, it's going to give me 0 0.13. Okay, it's gonna give us 13 hundredths. Now for our time, we want to figure out how much he earns in his savings account after five years. So five is going to be our time. Now let's go ahead. We are going to substitute in these values. My principal is going to be 800. My rate is going to be 0 0.13. And my time is going to be five. Now with your calculator, go ahead and take this time to calculate this multiplication problem. All right, so our interest is going to be 520, which means how much money did they earn in a savings account after five years? Well, he earned $520. Now B. How much money will be in a savings account at the end of the five years? So to total this, we are going to add how much he invested, his principal, plus the interest. So we're going to take our 800 plus 520. And when we add those together, we're going to get a total of 1,320. And so at the end of the five years, he is going to have $1,320. All right, let's move on to number two. Lily and her three friends went out for lunch, and they wanted to leave a 20% tip. The receipt shown below lists the lunch total before tax and tip. The tip is on the cost of the food plus tax. The sales tax rate in Pleasant Hill is 9.25%. Now, I tried to get the tax rate as accurate as I could for Pleasant Hill, and this is um, what I came up with. So here, we're going to the creamery. Lily and her three friends bought the following, and they're going to split the bill. But we want to know how much that bill is going to be including tax, and then we want to find out how much the tip is also going to cost on top of that tax to figure out our total. So A, it says find the actual total of the bill including the tax. What formula we're going to want to use first is quantity equals percent times whole.
The reason why we're using this formula is because the quantity is going to be the amount of tax that we pay for the total bill. So our tax is going to equal our percent times our whole. Here, the percent that we're given is 9.25%. And we need to first turn that percent into a decimal. To do that, I'm going to take my decimal and move it two places to the left. And so what I get is 0 0.0925. Then my whole is going to be my whole cost, and I know that that is going to be the $44. Now, let's go ahead and take our percent times our whole. Go ahead and calculate this in your calculator for me. Okay, the answer you should have gotten is 4.07. And now we want to know what the t cost, though, of the total bill is including tax. Here we know what our tax is, but now we want to add it on to our whole. So we're going to take our whole, which is 44, plus the $4.07 that the taxes and add them together. And that's going to give us a total of $48.07. Now that is the total of the bill, including the tax. Now we need to find the actual total of the bill, including the tax, which we already know, and the tip. What we have to remember from our problem is that the tip is on top of the food tax, okay? So now we're gonna use that $48.07 to be our whole. To figure out our tip, we're still going to use the formula quantity equals percent times whole. And this time, the tip is going to be our quantity. Now we're still going to use the tax rate of Pleasant Hill for a percent. And now instead of using the total from our receipt, we're going to make whole the bill plus the tax. Let's go ahead and put that equation into our formula. And then when you're done writing, go ahead and solve this with your calculator. Okay. And the answer you should have gotten in your calculator is 9.614. Let's go ahead and add our whole with our tip. So we're going to have 48.07 plus 9.614. And that is going to give us a total of 57.684. Now we need to figure out this in terms of money, which means we're only going to go to the hundredths place. So we want to look at the value that's to the right of the hundredths. And if it's a five or above, we round up. And if it's four and below, it stays the same. So because this is a four, we know that the eight is going to stay the same there. And so the total on their bill is going to be $57.68. All right, let's start with number three. Miley works at a car dealership and earns a commission on her total sales for the week. Her weekly paycheck was in the amount of $5,500, including her salary of $1,000. Her sales for the week totaled to be $30,000. Express her rate of commission as a percent and round to the nearest whole. Now, we are going to use the formula quantity equals percent times whole.
We know what we're trying to find here is the percent because it's asking for the rate of commission as a percent. Okay, now what we need to find is our quantity and our whole. We know the whole is the total that she made that week, which is going to be the 30,000. But now we need to find her quantity. We know her paycheck was $5,500, but remember that she also includes a salary of $1,000. So what we wanna do is take that $5,500 and subtract 1,000 from it because that's going to give us how much she earned on commission alone. So that's gonna give us $4,500. Now, let's go ahead and substitute um, these numbers in. So my quantity is going to be 4,500 equals the percent, and we can use P as percent times the whole, which is 30,000. Now to get P by itself, we're gonna divide both sides by 30,000. And we know that 30,000 divided by 30,000 is going to give us 1. So we're left with 1P. And go ahead with your calculator, type in 4,500 divided by 30,000. Okay. And your answer should be 0 0.15. Now that we've figured out P, remember we're trying to find percent. This is important. We need to turn 0 0.15 from decimal form in to a percent. How we can do that is we can take our decimal and move it two places to the right. So one, two. That means that we're going to have 15%. Another way to do this is we can look at what place value our five is in. Our five is in the hundreds place, and so we know that it's gonna be 15 over 100. And when we talk about percent, we know that percent means out of 100. So 15 out of 100 is also equivalent to 15%. Now we know that Miley's rate of commission is 15%. All right, number four. A printing company is enlarging the image on a postcard to make a greeting card. The enlargement of the postcard's rectangular image is done using a scale factor of 150%. Be sure to show all other related math work used to answer the following questions. A. Represent a scale factor of 150% as a fraction in a decimal. So we know that 150% is going to be 150% out of 100%. So we can go ahead and write this. Now, if we had 150 divided by 100, you can go ahead and put that into your calculator. That's going to give us 1.5. So now we know that 150% as a decimal is going to give us 1.5. Now, as a fraction, we can do the same thing. We can take 150 over 100 and simplify it. 150 and 100 have a greatest common factor of 50. So 150 divided by 50 is going to give us 3, and 100 divided by 50 is going to give us 2. Now, if you wanted to make this a mixed number, that would be okay, but it would be easier to leave in fraction form. But that mixed number is going to leave us with one and a half. Okay, B, the postcard's dimensions are six inches by four inches. What are the dimensions of the greeting card? I always think that it's easier to draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw an image here for us. Okay, so here is our postcard. We know that we have four inches by six inches. Here, I'm gonna add those in. But now we want to know what are the dimensions of the greeting card. 
using the scale factor of 150%. To do that, we're going to want to use our decimal form for this, and we're going to take both sides of this postcard and multiply them by 1.5. So we're going to have 1.5 times 6 and 1.5 times 4. Go ahead and calculate those into your calculator for me. Okay, so for 1.5 times 6, we would have got 9, so we have 9 inches, and then 1.5 times 4 is going to give us 6 inches. So what are the dimensions of the greeting card? Well, they're going to be 9 inches by 6 inches. Okay, and that concludes our study guide. Keep studying, and I'll see you in class.